Hi everybody. Um, today I want to talk a little bit about how the various money flows work um, for different types of indicator, particularly the Chenkin money flow and then the money flow index, and just compare these two um, and look at the volume and uh, S&P 500. So um, basically what I wanted to start off by doing is taking a careful look um, at both the price and the money flow. So um, if you're not familiar with them, uh, I'll kind of show you the calculations really quickly here. Uh, so here's a Fidelity page on uh, the uh, Chenkin money flow, CMF. Um, and basically it's the sum of the uh, close minus high, minus high minus close over high over minus low. So uh, basically to and then times the volume so if you take this calculation and you do a sum of that over n days so you can do 20 days is what we're doing here in the charts that I have uh, you can put 14 days um, or whatever number you would like um, you'll get more details uh, the more numbers of uh, days that you use but it's also more lag too because it's not uh, uh, but anyway, so the one thing I do like about this is they both use the volume and the price. Um, so it's a little bit slightly different for money flow. So if you look at the money flow, it's on a zero, uh, excuse me, 100 point scale. Um, so you do uh, basically a 14, uh, 14 day or a 20 day where we're doing high, low, close divided by three for typical price. Um, but that should basically give you a basic idea for how the two calculations work. Um, and you can look at these two pages to see uh, the calculations if you like in more detail. Uh, so this particular day was a pretty big day in the market. It was about a 3 and 3.7, uh, 3.8% move in the day, uh, primarily down. Um, and you can see um, basically that the volume was both positive and negative uh, throughout the day. Um, and then you have a lot of different uh, other changes. So. Basically what I wanted to start by doing is take a look at the money flow. So you can see here, um, it's basically the money was flowing into the market. This is mostly green down here. So that says that the was positive. And then you can see a clinker volume also shows positive volume. So you see the money flow is basically going in and then the chicken money flow and the money flow both show going positive. Uh, so there's a particular point that you can see a little bit more clearly with the Chenkin money flow. Um, you can't quite see uh, in detail with the regular money flow. Um, so that's kind of helpful about the Chenkin money flow, uh, which is nice to know about. Um, and basically this is at 9.08 a.m. Uh, so just before the market opens, so you can see that the volume is lower here. Um, so the volume is averaged overnight carefully compared and then you can see that the money there was definitely some uh, start of the uh, money was flowing into the market starting at about 7 a.m. right and then it basically and then the money started to flow out of the market uh, at 9.08 so you can see that that was a good warning sign so you can see for the rest of the day you might have thought hey look at the market is getting increasing in value but then right here at 9.08 um, when I saw that the money was going out of the market and the volume was also becoming more negative, um, as you can see on this, you can see the volume is starting to go from positive to negative. <coughs> right in the open, I can help you understand. But then just before the open, you can see uh, at 930, 9.30, you can see right around here um, that the money was pretty much going out of the market. Um, and then now if we zoom in here and look at the chart a little bit more detail, it's the most important part of the day, um, you can see, start to see what happened here. So the chink and money flow and the money flow. So you can see the chink and shows it a little bit before the spike. You can see the spike there and then the money flow shows it right here. That, that's peak, which is basically they're both kind of correct because you can see that this was a downward candle. Um, but yet uh, the uh, money flow says slightly different. So basically uh, just different, uh, slightly different uh, for money flow and chinkin, um the calculations. So, uh, but anyway, the candles do show up here so you can start to see uh, that the negative volume starts to show in here and then the volume starts to drop with all these negative candles showing up. And then particularly in here, it starts to drop.
And let me just make sure I go to Hike and Ash you so you can see what the trend is here. So you can see the trend is primarily negative and then it actually changes the whole look of the um, Jenkins money flow and the uh, money flow index as well. So you can see that these candles have even shifted um, and it's actually slightly better with the regular candle chart. You can see a little more detail in terms of what's going on. Uh, so again, there's a lot of good reasons to use both of these uh, money flow indicators um, because uh, essentially what a money flow indicator is, is it uses price and volume and then it's an oscillator of that. But as you can see, uh, you know, there's different reasons to see and use. Uh, sometimes you can get a different reading slightly on each one. So, uh, for instance, on this one, you can see that the actual lowest price was in here um, and yet an early downtrend was right in here based on the volume you can see the volume is pretty low here so both are pretty helpful uh, and I recommend using them and let me know if you have any questions uh, I'd be glad to try to help you out uh, so one last point here I noticed uh, on the Investopedia definition so it says chink and money flow oscillator uh, both is similar to the momentum oscillator, but it uses the exponential moving average. So you can see here, chicken money flow is similar to MACD, and both indicators use exponential moving averages. So you have to be careful uh, which uh, indicator you use. Uh, some of them use exponential, some of them don't. I personally prefer the exponential moving average. Um, and actually in here, you can see it doesn't give you an option to set it, um, and neither does the... Uh, it just says so zones and the results. Um, but you can see it's very closely related. Um, and you can pretty much check it with the high and lows of the day. So, or the extreme peaks. So if you see some peaks in the price, you might want to check which oscillator you like better based on those peaks. Um, and you can kind of see here um, that again, uh, this one, Schenken, kind of is a little bit different than the money flow, but yeah, the money flow is a little bit flat on both ticks here. And then the Schenken is showing you more of a downtrend uh, on this. So they're slightly different, um, just ever so slightly, and you can really use both of them, but it's maybe best just use one or the other, otherwise you can get pretty collided up with your charts. So I'm going to do one last thing. I'm going to add the RSI oscillator here uh, in green. Uh, and then you can see, let me see if I find it here, RSI, Relative Strength Index. And I'll just make it green and we'll add it to compare it under those same intervals, same circumstances. So you can see here, uh, the, the RSI uh, does show a lot of detail here on this, but it doesn't add the volume. So uh, we know that basically uh, volume definitely matters. Uh, on these ticks, but you can see that price went way up here um, And yet the volume uh, was also pretty high as well So uh, if you're doing like a long-term strategy, you probably want to use something like the money flow indexes or the chink in money flow um, Because uh, basically the RSI does not include the volume uh, although it does look very similarly you can see that uh, because the volume, like in this region, the volume was very low, the money flow index still stayed pretty high, uh, and then yet this one started to go down and the RSI, uh, and you can see there's different changes on that uh, relative. So, uh, but it's important to know about. Uh, yeah, so in general, what we're talking about here is the money flow. So basically, you know, when we compare that to the RSI, like we were doing, um, we can kind of see what makes sense and what is better to use. Uh, so I'm going to switch to a 15 minute chart and you can see what's going on on a 15 minute chart over the multiple days. Um, so basically here we see uh, basically the uh, money flow index. Uh, it kind of drops down to here, but it, in general, it can't get lower than zero. So uh, the nice part about the chink in money flow is that you can keep, it's more of a relative indicator over long periods of time. So you can see here, you can see that, yeah, this is really low, um, but just how low comparison wise, it's hard to see that um, unless you use the chink in money flow index. 
Um, now, that goes back to the calculations of how the chicken money flow works, um, but basically it's scaled to 100% uh, on both the money flow and the relative strength index. Okay, so my friend just uh, told me that he wants me to check out Google, uh, so I'll take a look at Google. Uh, you can see the money flow for a different stock rather than S&P 500. Um, wow. so, so here we can kind of see that, that the money flow went way, way down. Um, wow. And the only difference, the nice part about the Chenkin money flow again is, is that it shows precisely how much further down. So you see a little bit of a difference, uh, and I'm not sure why uh, the money flow is going up here slightly, but you can see it's a, it's a, it's a, if you look at this bottom volume here, this bottom volume shows that the bottom volume is positive. So you can see the volume went slightly up and so with the money flow, whereas the price, the RSI indicator only went up slightly on that tick. Um, the, actually the money flow went up more because it was actually a pretty strong, uh, new, so that's, that's, still that's an institutional liquidation that it looks like. That's a lot of money, right? Yeah, so that's, that's another that's concern that's about a, using... That's not a retail liquidation. That's, that's obviously an institutional liquidation from Google. Yeah, so it really depends. It's hard to say who uh, liquidated these, um, but we can see that this is a big day for the market. This is a 5% drop, 5.5, almost 5.5% drop. Uh, in the whole market here, right? Um, and actually, interestingly, on the RSI indicator, you can see the RSI shows slightly before. And I actually like to use the ultimate, there's a, there's one called the ultimate uh, oscillator. And it's just like the RSI, and I'll bring it up here, um, except for it's a little bit more detailed. Uh, you can see here on the ultimate indicator, it kind of bounces up and down a little bit more, um, but actually RSI looks a little bit cleaner relative to the actual price can you? Uh, movement here. But you can see that there's just slight things that you want to maybe notice that are hard to notice. So here you can see it went up slightly, and you can see up slightly here on the actual price. Um, but it's harder to see that on the RSI, and it's pretty hard to see it in this because basically the volume is flat. Um, so again, we're primarily, the goal of this is not really to study the RSI or the ultimate indicator. It's primarily to compare these two indicators, the Chankin uh, and any others. But I'm sorry, are you going to ask a question? I'm just listening. I was going to say, um, I'm just, I'm listening to you. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, in general, there's just sure. a lot. You're not sure who, who's, who's, because that seems to me to be some sort of, uh, institutional dump from that. I mean, that, that looks like a pretty serious um, money flow. So we would have to change this to the one minute. So I, I'm on the 15 minute right now. Institution is, is bailing on Google. Yeah, so I'm, I'm switching it to the one minute. Kind of and we can probably tell from the types of so so here again, we're we're, we're trying to compare the Chenkin money flow versus the regular money flow index, right? Mm -hmm. And we can see that the money flowing in here, this is at a different time frame, right? So you have to look at where the time is on these. And you can see, you can see it like nine. Google, Google doesn't show this. It's a little bit different looking at the, this is the previous day. So we, we jump from the previous day all the way over to the 930 open here. So it's hard to say. This, this little blip here, in here, the money flow looks consistent, but it's not actually the same thing because it's well, two different days. Do, can you do a year chart and do uh, and look at the year chart money flow? Yeah, uh, so we could do a year chart, and it's a little bit harder because the volume, so over the year, this is still with Google. We should probably, we, I'm gonna switch it to Apple here, right? So I'm gonna just gonna switch uh, to Apple. Uh, Apple, we don't wanna do Apple, so keep it on Google. All right, fine. So uh, I'll switch it on Google uh, here. So, uh, so on Google, you can see. So, first of all, one so, thing one thing important to say is that these volume oscillators on the top show that the volume was primarily positive. Uh, there's been a lot of positive volume 
uh, through this period, right? And then in the recent months here, you can see some negative volume. So how that yeah, yeah. how that uh, how that affects the money flow is important because basically when we do these calculations, now I I don't know if you saw these calculations. Let me uh, let me bring these calculations back to the window here. So. This is the calculation for the money flow again, right? So the calculation for the money flow is 14, uh, is basically 14 periods of this, right? So you do the high, low, close divided by three, right? And you do 14 periods of that. Uh, and you do each of these raw money flow is the typical price times the volume. So it's each of these periods, uh, you know, the positive money flow and the negative money flow. Uh, and I don't really even like the way they explain it. So you have to look at several different uh, versions. Um, but in general, the reason one of the reasons I like this is it uses high, low, and close. Uh, and you can also uh, – I started using money flow originally more because of that. But I start to like this one a little bit better uh, just because – uh, it seems to be it doesn't it doesn't multiply by the hundred. So when you look at this calculation here, you do one hundred minus one hundred over one plus. Way that you can somehow connect uh, this outflow of money from Google over the past um, couple so, of weeks. Or you said there's a negative. So you said that the trend was so, somewhat yeah. positive here. You said the trend here um, from about April till June. Or July was somewhat positive, and then you have some. We have some negative volume. You said here going into the July August. Um, is there any way that you can kind of rationalize that um, this structure here was is somehow um, sporadically is somehow responsible for causing? Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, so what is it in capitalist? Terms? So it's it's hard to say. It's hard to say what causes what causes the money flow. So we we would have to say that we'd have to look at previous previous sections of the money general flow. market trend is what I'm trying to ask. So for example, this this. Uh, so I, uh, I I'm I'm Josh. I'm, I'm from uh, Weston Associates. I'm I'm of the opinion that Apple. Is actually responsible for the mar for the market moving higher. Generally, it's generally responsible for the general movement upside to the market because it never it it's refused to give out and correct itself, and it's so heavily weighted. So I'm just curious if there's any way that this sell off could have been somehow spurred by a massive kind of accumulation. So we could of, graph we could graph Apple on yes, top of the Google cool. plot here, for instance, right? So you can start to say, but this is money flow only for Google down here, right? So you can see that this was a quite a, you know, it, it's just, it's it's important to look at the, it's, it's hard to see, uh, wow, that's a little bit messed up there, sorry about that. Uh, but I'm gonna do like a five minute chart here. I mean, you should generally be able to answer like a basic index question like that, right? So, so what correlation does this Google stock have to the, to the entire index? selling off so it's pretty big i mean this particular day uh you know we'd have to look at the the chart for that so basically uh if you look at the overall market for the s p 500 you know google is maybe less than five percent ten percent of that section uh, of the market right depending on how you measure that right so you can see here like like on, on this chart, on this chart, right? There's actually the actual money flow started out of Google at 9:40 a.m. Right? So you see here on this chart. Oh wow! I see that. You can okay. see 9:50 a.m. It really started right around 9:50 a.m. and then it started to really sink down. So if we want, let me do a minute per minute chart, and we can actually see the minute that that money. It's harder to see because the the money flow doesn't really. It consolidates some of these measurements, and it's a little bit easier to see on the five-minute chart, right? So you can see on the five-minute, you get to see this little, and and actually the the money flow here, uh, for some reason, is different, and I don't know why. You know, the calculations are just slightly different, so you can see that the high and the low and the close, and again, this starts for two different days, right? So we, we're actually looking at 
we're actually looking at the 25th here on this tick and then this on this tick it's the 26th so we really need to start here when we compare so this that, when we compare this money flow versus this one we have to start it on this tick right here and even that it's kind of a little bit suspicious because the it's actually the previous 20 indexes and when you specify these on the periods here uh, yeah, yeah. The money flow is typically done with 14 periods, and I wanted to compare it. So if I change this to a 14 period money flow, it's going to change everything, yeah. right? So it's a little bit sharper. The nice part about a 14 period money flow uh, is that it's a little bit less laggy. So you, it is nice to do that. I could change this one to 14 as well. We can do them both on 14. And then we can start to see which we think is more laggy than the other. And that's really a debate because here. So how, uh, come, how, how come the Chalkin one changed from being flat at that point to having a slope now? So if you look at the volume down here, right? So basically, th it, it, this is a bad instance to look at. It's better to look at like an instance like right in here because this is further along in the day. So let's do a minute chart. First of all, let me change it back to the minute chart so we can get so I can answer your question correctly. So now it's using 14 periods, so 14 minutes, 14 minutes pr prior to this blip here of 1010. So the problem is, is that this peak here shows up at 1017. You see that? Which is too late. It's too late by that time so this is it's a little bit laggy in the indicator right so uh and you can see that you can see there's a blip earlier and that's because some of the tick does affect it but in general this is why you want to use exponential uh indicators right because an exponential indicator keeps the most recent data as the most important and you can also see the clinger so this one this one shows the positive volume almost per the same tick, which is really nice. And it's an exponential, this particular one is an exponential indicator, which is great, right? So, and you can see as a result, if you zoom in here, it's almost per tick correct, right? So you can see right here, it also shows a peak for peak on it, right? So, but we're really trying to look at this indicator here uh, because we're trying to get an overall flow. So it might be later on. So if we're actually looking at the stock market, we can see so, the we can see that the money flow was going in up until okay. about this point, right? And it even shows the drop right here, uh, but it just doesn't show it just doesn't show all the details correctly. Up, then the money flow goes back up when it's selling, or what, what is what's happening here with this? Up and so, down moving in the chalk and money flow. And so the, basically, the what is what Why happens? Is it going up and down like that? So that's because of the way that the calculation is made. So <laughs> if you look at, uh, let me bring the chart back over here for you, Josh. Um, so if you look at this, if you look at the way the calculation is made here, uh, this is an example here. So another example showing how this would work, right? So it's basically. Uh, this is a four. Now we're using the fourteen period, right? So the problem is that these fourteen periods only resulting in these fourteen periods, right in here. Um, <coughs> now the nice part about this, though, is that it's possible to compare and say that these. The interesting thing is that during the end of the day, these moves down were pretty significant, actually, right? And you can see that it, it shows a pretty significant downward flow. And it's hard to see that in the volume, um, but it really was pretty significant. Um, so let's, let's, let's go back. Let's go back to the year chart. Even though this is pretty significant here, let's too. Go to, let's go to March 3rd and check the money flow scenario on Google on March 3rd. So if we want to do that, so basically back in here, these per day ones maybe work a little bit better, but you can see, again, you can see like here it looks a little bit laggy maybe so like back in march here's march 3rd right so we see, first of all we see some negative march, so what, what does it look like in march so we're, it looks like there's a pretty uh, substantial money flow there 
Yeah, so we time. could say we could say, but there was some for the f- couple days here. There was a couple days of pretty good money money flowing into the uh, into Google, right? Um, so it goes up. So where is the top out here? The top. So that's in uh, that tops. That, so the top is right around right. here, right? But we but actually the further top is over here, right? So, so the actual top. Oh, that's just one month. So in March there was an entire so that was right. So there's that's exactly right. So March to April, exactly thirty days, there's a there's a dramatic rise there in the money flow. Why is that? So we'd have to compare Why? that exactly. we'd, have, we'd have to compare so that to some other stocks too, potentially, right? And then look at maybe the whole S P five hundred and look at particular news events for Google and, and some other fundamental analysis, technical so analysis. So how does that compare to this you were talking about there's negative volume here coming in at the very last month. What's the time frame on the negative volume that comes into Google here according to the cleaner volume? How, so how, let me first of all let's zoom well? in. Let's zoom in here so we can see what's going on, right? So is that a, first of all the most important this there seems to be something wrong with the chart right now, and I'm a little bit sorry about this. I don't know why it shows positive here, but uh, but basically, in general, this this big flow, uh, you know, Google. If you look at this S and P five hundred, I'm gonna try to compare this to to the spy. So you can see, you can see that the that Google and the spy, the the spy is this blue line now, right? Uh, yeah. And you can kind of see what's going on, right? A little bit. So basically, is Google faster than the uh, spy? Yes, probably, right? So you can see that it drops faster, uh, and then it also maybe comes up faster uh, because it almost hits here on the same point. Um, but uh, but you know, Josh, these kind of questions are tough to say because you know, in general, what we're trying to do here is use these indicators to make points on a buy or sell decision, right? So typically what happens is that... You use these indicators to kind of find patterns. Right, so you can say that if... Obviously there's some sort of pattern that's that's formed here from some sort of work ethic. I would call it a work ethic. Looking at that money flow chart, um, I'm kind of an amateur, but it seems to me that there's some sort of work ethic here that... Because you got to think about it, it's a it's a company, so there's some sort of ethic in the company, and it seems to me that some that period from um, March to April was some sort of uh, the ethics were very high there, and something's happened here um, towards the end where there was let's there, go back to that go back to where that chart was that you saw the money flow again. So for the year. So Hold here. Back to the year. So this is the year chart right now. So this is the so Chenkin. So I'm gonna use I'm gonna use Chenkin money flow because it's slightly it's slightly more detailed. Uh, it's changing. There's no big rise here from April to March now. March to April. I guess there's a small one here. How come the size changed? Well, so here's the thing, right? So the price was going up, right? And there was money, and there was money going into the market. So why is this chart? The chart's different now. March, April, it was like a large developing. I added, I added spy on top of this. I'm talking about the chalk and money flow. That's what we're looking at. Okay, so uh, it's changed now. So it could be that. So there's different charts. So there's different charts. So basically, if I use a hike and ashy, which I usually like to use, uh, it will change it slightly uh, sometimes. So you can see that the details are actually more with the candlestick chart uh, than the hike and ashy. But sometimes it's nice to use hike and ashy um, because it gives you uh, well, kind of the midpoints. Like we're looking back here at March, April. Is that it? That's March, April. Back here, all the way. So, for example, March and April. So here, here's a question, right? So here, here's a question for you. So back in. So, 
So this is March and April. And then you can see here, so something's happened here that was very detrimental to the ethic of the company because you can see that the rise from March to April was very substantial. There was capital. The point I'm trying to, this is a very important point. This is a capital gain. This is capital accumulation here. And this capital is taken out. So you can see that something's happened here at the end of April that was very detrimental to the ethic and, and it completely sells the money flow out. Yeah. So, so it, you could argue that the ethics of this com if the company or what you could call the goal very in more simplistic terms, the goal of the company had failed in some way. Yeah, you could say that. Now, if, if you want to say that the ethic is worse in April, you know, let me get a drink of water really quick. I'm going to put this on pause. I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back here. So regarding the ethic, you know, you could say that as the money's flowing into the market, most people agree that Google is doing the right thing. Right. So, but there's a point at which there's a point at which this ethic question becomes too high, right? And you basically have you basically have a point where you get too high in the market, and that's an overbought region, right? And that this detects it here. You can see this is saying overbought, um, and the chink in money flow doesn't really do that the same way. It's better to do that relatively comparatively, right? You can say that back in here. Uh, there was probably a similar attitude about Google. So that, that's a very terrible. Um, that's almost as worse. So what I'm trying to say is that kind of exit is very comparable to the exit that happened over the last three days in the money flow. It's that dramatic. Yeah, it's pretty. It was pretty dramatic here. Now you can see that this was more on the. You know, once we hit that peak, you can see the peak is up actually up in here. So at the start up, of the year, yeah, right, so, and and basically then, the, but the real drop happened. So this drop that we've been seeing recently is significant, but it actually involved a little bit of a pullback too, right? So basically, we don't know. We we can compare it. You know, people are not as unhappy. They were really unhappy. They felt really cheated out, maybe back here in. April, right? January, February, March, oh, April. Can you do me a that's pull up the W that's compare it that like you did compare it to WTI oil. So if we want to do this with oil. No, just compare this chart with WTI oil. So I'm gonna do the, put the hold on, on top. I'm doing the micro WTI crude oil. Okay. Now do that and, and, and just do it with Google. Well, hold on. I, I want to look at it separately as a separate beast entirely. So I want to see the oil price in conjunction with that Google money flow. All right. So let's get back here. Uh, yeah. So basically, if we compare this with the the. Micro crude oil. So here you can see that uh, it's just totally different, right? But it's hard to say. We have to actually have a money flow for specifically for the crude oil to compare it, right? So it's hard to say. Like in this point, we have a peak for oil, right? Uh, and a not necessarily a peak for – so it's almost inversely. It's almost it inversely. Like there's a spike in the price right here. So in March, uh, there, so March through, so we have uh, March like April, June. isn't there a spike in the, look at that spike right in the middle, in, the, in that month. Yeah, I mean, there's different spikes back in here. I mean, it's it's really, it's complicated to compare multiple, April. do like arbitrage between oil and. Spike uh, between March to April. Uh. Okay, so hold on. So I, I just want to make sure that you're understanding these mo the chink in money flow and the other one. So, uh, Josh, going back to these calculations, these these calculations should make sense to you, right? So basically, uh, okay. you haven't. Here. So this this is the this is the basic equation for chink in money flow, right? So when you I'm ask yourself here. when you ask yourself which you like, and I can make it a little bit bigger, I think. So do you not see that? Do you not see that price spike in March through uh, April in the oil? 
Yeah, but Josh, I, before we get into a detailed thing like that, you got to make sure that you understand how the calculation is made, right? So basically, so for the oil, it would use the closing price minus the low, right, in this bracket, and then I use the high minus close, and then all over high minus low, right? So this gives it like a percentage for the day. So it's giving you like a percentage move for the day. Uh, and you take all that and you multiply it times the volume, right? So it's very similar. These two calculations are very similar, except you take a typical price here. Now you do typical price times volume. It's a little bit simpler to understand for money flow. Um, but just because it's simpler doesn't mean it's better necessarily. Um, but uh, but anyway, I want to close off this video for the sake of the YouTube because I'm just going to upload it to YouTube and stuff like that. Um, but basically, you know, they're both very similar. As you can see on the graphs, they show very similar kind of points. Um, now, the difference, the, the key point here is that when you, when you use an oscillator that is dependent on this 100% range thing, you can only go up to 100%. That's it. In the chank and money flow, it can go up to any number at all so which is nice because then you can start tracing back like here we see these two look basically the same but it looks slightly more for this right and you can see here it's actually the other way around right this one shows slightly more here whereas this one shows slightly more there so it's just slightly so can you say that, that would, would you say that the um the price the entire price of google it, the trend you can see there, the up and down movement for the last four months. How how far has it been going up and down right here? It starts in June, so and it rises and falls, rises and falls, rises and falls, rises and falls. So it an looks oscillator, to me like that's in some way influenced by the money flow. Well, it's not really the price. This is primarily price and volume, right? So basically, this oscillator. Because of the calculation, oh. because the when when you do this calculation, it includes both. So you take the typical price times the volume. So when you have these oscillations, you're not only having. So that's the problem with the price. The price does not include on this particular tick. There was a lot of volume, right? And so on the oscillator, the oscillator will actually go up slightly more uh, than this. It, it will still. They're both going up, but it's just. And it actually reflects kind of delayed. So it's just it's it's just the main use for this is to make it simpler to understand. So you can see that primarily this was like probably you could say downtrend in here, right? But not only that, it was part of a downtrend in here. So and it's just hard to say because of the zero this zero line, you can tell uh, you can tell that based on these zero lines. Um, but it looks to me like. Um it looks to me like to continue my first question I asked is how is this connected to the entire fall in the index? I mean, you can kind of easily see there, you know, because you can see that there's an attempt to move money back into Google. And for how many months is that from June all the way till August? So if you really want to understand the money flow, it's best to not use a stock just like Google, right? Well, That's why I mean, we use the MES. Like, like if I use the MES... They tried to move money flow into it and so, it ultimately failed to get. It. So one of the problems with our whole discussion oh, Google here, not a good place to put money. That's just the end We were conclusion. looking at one individual stock, right? Now if we add Google to this, like if I, well, if I, mean, I add Google... Obviously not a good place to put your money in. Well, it's, it's not a good company anymore. So here's 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 a different here's a different way to compare it, right? So now, if we do spy, like Google's a shitty company now. Okay, hold on, Josh. Watch language. Uh, so here now we're starting to compare the money flow for the whole entire market versus Google. So now Google is in purple. So this is the better way to do that. So what you're talking about, if you're really looking at the money flow, the better way to do it is to take the money flow for the entire market. And then you can say on a given instance here, like this peak on Google, down lower here, the money flow was also starting to peak, right? Um, so if you ever see a difference between these two, so you can see down in here, the money was still flowing out of the market and yet Google was going up, right? And then it started to stay flat 
and yet Google still went up, right? So that's an instance where the money flow is staying relatively flat for the market, and Google was going up. Change of ownership. All right. Well, anyway, I want to can't close this up for the audience right now, Josh, um, okay. and then I'm going to upload it to YouTube and some other things. Um, but I, thanks for talking with me about it. Um, hopefully, you'll try using some of these indicators. There's a lot of different indicators, um, but these money flow indicators are super important because they're the only indicators that really include price and volume. So, like when you start testing out indicators, uh, you know it's super important to to try something that actually has, uh, you know, price and volume. Anyway, thanks for your time, and uh, let me know if you got any questions.